Hi there guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Zach and amongst other things I am a reenactor and a jouster. Um, this series I'm doing at the moment is mistakes that I have made as a reenactor and in today's episode I'm going to talk about two mistakes which are both basically the opposite sides of the same coin and this is when we're looking at an original source and sometimes we trust it too much and sometimes we don't trust it enough and usually I mean we can go backwards and forwards I certainly have found myself over time going backwards and forwards between these two equally uh, equally difficult mistakes so sometimes we might look at a source and think oh this is completely accurate everything in this is brilliant and we look really deeply into it and so on uh, the opposite mistake would be to look at a source and discard it out of hand this is especially done with paintings and sculpture and things like that where we see something that maybe we didn't expect and so therefore we um, we discard it and we say this is just artistic license no one actually ever had armor like that or no one ever actually um, wore a hat like that or something now um, usually what causes us to react like this is our own preconceptions and I really um, an, an example of where I've gone through this uh, with my reenacting career is um, through reading various articles online back when I first started um, I had learned that there were two types of plate armour in use in the 15th century and those were Italian and German um, so then this knowledge that I had um, through my own research then meant that when I saw examples of English armour um, or other types of armour that were outside of this Italian and German rule that I had in my head, uh, I discarded them, I dismissed them out of hand. And a lot of people did the same thing. And over, over my time reenacting, actually, it's become more wider known and more wider publicised and people have been more educated in the fact that actually there are a lot more than just those two styles. Those are the two styles that we have the most of right now, but actually um, they weren't even necessarily the most popular styles in the time. Italian, yes, but I'm not actually all that sure that the German style was seen too far outside of Germany during the 15th century. Um, so uh, an example of the other side of things uh, where I've um, I've possibly taken it too far the other way is when um, I've been looking through images of um, of things such as uh, a manuscript image of the siege of Troy and that sort of thing and you look at that and you think oh that there's, there's some really cool armor in this or that person's wearing an arming doublet. I, maybe I should um, I should match my arming doublet to that. Now, it's very possible that those things could have existed, and it's very possible that they um, that arming doublet is actually a correct doublet for the period. But to use just one reference from an allegorical painting of the siege of Troy would not actually be doing service to uh, to the source and instead actually one would probably need to move further away from that um, from that source to corroborate the evidence inside it um, so yeah how how can we stop ourselves from making either of these uh, overall um, uh, very similar but um, but different sides uh, of the same mistake. I would say that 
uh, first of all, we need to make sure that we are looking at a wide array of sources and that we, when we're reproducing items, we use um, things that show up in more than one source and preferably in sources that are more than just a, um, a painting or something like that. So for example, if something shows up in a painting and a statue and also a description of it somewhere, that is an extremely, that is extremely good evidence that that thing existed in its own particular way. A lot of the evidence that we have um, beyond um, the, uh, the statues of English armour, a lot of the corroborating evidence is actually um, bills of sale uh, where people are buying armour in the English style. So those two pieces of evidence together um, help to show us that actually the English style did exist and there were styles other than um, the ones that we have existing um, armour for. Um, yeah, so look for multiple sources of the same one and never dismiss something out of hand um, just because you think uh, you know something. I think one of the uh, one of the big things that I've had to deal with um, going through my uh, experience as a reenactor is actually realizing how little I know <laughs> and how little we know as a community compared to uh, to real life. If you just think about um, you know actually how little do I know as a British person about American life now and then extrapolate that out to how, how little do I know about the 15th century you know there's so much of life going on in the 15th century that I am not privy to that I do not know yet and through study I can improve that but I think sometimes when we make snap decisions about um, about whether something is correct or incorrect I think uh, that is based on us think, feeling like we have enough information to be the judge of a um, of a source, whereas actually um, coming to it with an open mind, but also a sceptical mind, and trying to link it to other sources to corroborate it, um, I think is the way to go about um, solving this particular problem. Well, thank you very much for watching. Um, I wonder if you're a reenactor, have you um, made any mistakes? Are there anything that you think that I should cover? Uh, I'm also doing a series going through different parts of armour and my experiences in wearing them. So if either of those two series uh, would interest you, then do subscribe to the channel. Um, comments, um, likes would be vastly appreciated. If you dislike it, please leave me a comment as to why, because I'd love to fix that. I'd love to uh, solve something there. Um, yeah, thanks for coming along and I'll see you soon.